Welcome back everybody to another episode of the GC Informer. I am Snowy, otherwise known as Count Fracula. First news video in a couple of weeks, but I've got some damn great stories. We will start with Cyberpunk 2077. And it's a couple of days old now this news, but we have had a 50 minute gameplay video drop upon us in the last couple of days. And if I wasn't already hyped for Cyberpunk 2077, I certainly would be now. Because this is... Oh boy, that's a good gameplay trailer. The trailer basically shows off uh, a starting mission of the game, I believe it's a starting mission, and then sort of a mission a little bit later on during the game. And... They, oh, they show off the game pretty damn well. Um, they basically have... A, th a thing that's happening in modern sort of gameplay trailers where they have a guy narrating over the top of the gameplay trailer, very much like the Red Dead Redemption 2 gameplay trailer that launched about a month or so ago. But in this instance, it's done well enough that I don't mind it as much. It's less dry than traditional, or well, than traditional, than these things can tend to be. But yeah, the, the game that they're showing off is fucking spectacular. I mean, there was a point in the trailer where they just sort of came out of this, uh, I think, 2000 AD style mega block, where it's just basically a city in a in a tower, and they came out of that into the world. It's set in uh, a fictional, futurized place in North California, and I literally went, "Holy shit, that is gorgeous!" and "Oh." It is one of the best looking worlds I've seen in a long time and the detail in it is just it's exactly what you want. A lot of times open world games get this wrong where they go for a big open world but there's not a lot happening in it. This, I've no idea of the scale though, it does seem pretty damn large. There's so much going on in one space, even down to the pedestrians on the street. There's so many of them that it actually feels like a city with so many people in it, and I just love it. I love that trailer. It's really got my hype up. And uh, if you want to watch it, I'll link it in the description. Again, it's 50 minutes, so, you know, have an hour on hand to watch it. I think, I think it is maybe not the same gameplay that they showed at E3, but it is certainly of the same parts of the game because I remember listening to Max's uh, little breakdown of it when we had a discussion when they had a discussion about it on Pocket Edition and feel free to go and watch that as well but it is what he described is very similar I think to what actually happened in this gameplay trailer so you know might have been what he's seen regardless we've seen it it's fucking great and Still no release date, but damn I'm looking forward to that game. And now let's talk about some loot boxes. Oh boy, oh boy. So, Belgium. They actually brought in some proper legislation about loot boxes labelling them as gambling in certain instances. One of the games on their list of about 10 games where they deemed the loot box system to be in contradiction, contravention? of their gambling laws was Overwatch. And now I believe the amount of time has elapsed in terms of notice that they were given to rectify the situation. And now they've kind of had to. So in Belgium at least, loot boxes and all sort of paid for kinds of things like that have been removed from Overwatch. Now that surprises me greatly. Of course, Blizzard had to make a statement about this and the way they phrased it wasn't ideal. I'm putting it up on the screen now. It's kind of uh, kind of suggests that they know their own, they know Belgian law better than the Belgian government, which they kind of don't. And um, yeah, it's, it's all sounds a bit sort of fine, I guess I'll do it. Kind of, you know, the little petulant teenager kind of thing, which is quite funny, but at the same time Come on, <laughs> like you, you, you're not you're not doing anyone like you're not being a good person by obeying the laws. That's the least we expect of you guys. 
not much else to say other than that. The only uh, sort of thing I might might question is the balancing of the loot box cosmetic system is now a little bit out of whack in Belgium because I don't suspect they're going to rebalance it for just one country and that means that people who live in Belgium are now going to have to have a much much bigger grind fest on their hands if they want to unlock everything in Overwatch without paying for the loot boxes and I mean admittedly I have played Overwatch a few times and I've not even been remotely tempted to buy a loot box and yeah it's you know I've got I think I'm on level three or four and I've only really got loot boxes through leveling up and I've already had duplicates just FYI so I, I you know this Overwatch's loot box system is something that's been talked about to death really but uh, regardless it is now no longer a thing in in Belgium so hmm, we'll see we've said this a few times of course we'll see if this amounts to any other countries taking a stand against this kind of thing because it does set a precedent and especially in this instance where they've actually gone to the point of removing bits from the game it really does set a heavy precedent so we will see if this develops into other countries over the next few months that brings us to the end of this rather rambling episode of the GC Informer and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, consider liking, subscribing and sharing to this channel and hopefully I will get Max back on at some point with either myself or Sully to have a Pocket Edition slash newscast chat about the cyberpunk gameplay. But otherwise, thank you all very much for watching and uh, yeah, stay tuned to Gamecast. We've got news, reviews, let's plays and podcasts, great things. And otherwise, I'll see you soon for something else.